Hello friends, this is Kevin, aka Kman1, coming at you with another episode of Super Mario World. In the last episode, we tackled World 4, which doesn't really have like a cohesive theme to it, besides like, bridges, or something. Anyways, in this episode, we're going to be tackling secret exits in Vanilla Dome. So, let's jump right into... Shut up. Shut up. I'm good at this game, when I'm not recording, I swear. Anyways, you've already seen me play this level if you've been watching the rest of my videos, so I'm just gonna go ahead and cut to the secret exit. Alright, and the secret exit's pretty much impossible to miss if you've gotten the red switch palace, so all you need to do is grab the key, and in you go. And that's all there is to it, folks. Honestly. So, now we have vanilla secret one, so let's just jump right in. And this is definitely a standout level to me because it's basically a climbing level. Which, I mean, you might not think that climbing would be very standout, but in a game of pretty much all uh, side-scrolling platforming, top-down is very, very different. And I'm just failing spectacularly right now. So, I'm going to stop failing, and what we're gonna do is succeed. Because success is the opposite of failure. Or at least the antithesis. Maybe not the opposite, depending on how you look at things like opposites. But, you know. Whatever. I'm not here to talk about nomenclature. I'm here to play a video game. Alright. And the secret exit for this area is a little bit difficult to get if you don't have a cape. So, I might have to just come back for it. But, yeah, I'm just going to come back for it once I have a cape. But, it is very much worth your time to go ahead and take care of that, if I do say so myself. So, as far as the normal exit for this area, uh, you're definitely going to want to be taking advantage of these springboards whenever you can manage to grab one. Though, actually, now that I think about it, this one's pretty useless. And all you need to do is take this pipe over here. And we're already at the goalpost. And will I get... Nope, 28. I thought I was about to get the 40, like, legit for that time. But I was wrong, because I'm bad. Anyways, I'm going to go acquire a cape, and I'll be right back for the secret exit. See you guys back in just a moment. Alright, and so before, when I said that it was tricky to get the secret exit without a cape, I basically meant it was functionally impossible. So, that's basically how you're going to want to get to the secret exit for this area. And once you have accomplished that simple task, all you need to do is just head right in. And what do we get for the super amazing secret exit for Donut Secret 1, or Vanilla Secret 1? Donut Secret 1 was a while ago. What do we get for the super amazing secret exit of amazingness and epicness? We get another path into Star Road. Very, very nice. I'm not going to bother showing that again because I've already shown it twice, but that's pretty much all there is to it. On to Vanilla Secret 2. This is a pretty straightforward level. Not really much to say about it, except we get a Yoshi. Yoshi is always enjoyable when you have access to him. Uh, and there's really no point in me trying to get that cape because I already have a cape. This is actually a level where you can rack up a lot of 1-ups if you do have a cape, so... Uh, I barely messed that up. So, no cape, no 1-ups for me right now. But, that is quite alright. yeah, if you really feel like it, this is a pretty good level to grind 1-ups. Not the best, in my opinion but we'll be getting to the best once we've been through the rest. Oh. I didn't even know there was a cape there. See? Learn new things every day. And surprisingly, that isn't an area you can use to get shot out of a cannon. Alright, that's just coins. That's another area where you can manage to get some 1-ups if you have either, I don't know, 
if you have some way of killing all those in rapid succession. And so here, the main way you're going to want to be getting top of the goalpost is, well, using those Koopas, but I failed at it. Well, technically they're paratroopers. Whatever. No one cares about nomenclature in Mario. Except for me, because I'm usually pretty insistent about it. But don't question me, I'm an adult. We've been through this. And actually, this is a cape level, honestly. And so the big mechanic of this is you're going to want to ride the dolphins. And no, that's not an innuendo for anything. You're, you're literally just wanting to ride on dolphins to victory. They're like majestic horses, except they're basically just platforms. And so the twist they throw at you for this next area is some of them are vertical. And there's also a puffer fish. But we've already come across puffer fish before. And actually kind of a funny thing is that having Yoshi honestly completely breaks this level because you can just basically dance around on top of his head and he can't really do anything to stop you. So definitely one of the most enjoyable ways to beat this level at the very least, even if it's not one of the best. And in this area, you can actually just kind of ride along these dolphins and you don't actually have to push any buttons. I love it when the game plays itself for me, except I actually don't because I enjoy playing games. Ooh, and I got the 40, yay! Expect that to be the only time this happens this entire LP, because I'm bad. At least when I'm recording. When I'm not recording, I'm actually pretty okay at this game. Not to toot my own horn, but Let's go ahead and completely fail because I'm bad at this game for some reason. Again, this is another thing that I'm usually pretty good about when I'm not recording, but for some reason when I'm recording for you guys, it's just like, nope, can't do anything. But anyways, I had to get three up, so I'm going to call worth it on that one. And let's go ahead and tackle Vanilla Fortress. This is our first example of a fortress level, and naturally the first one is a water fortress, and I haven't expressed it before, but, or at least I don't think I've expressed it before, but I'm not a huge fan of the swimming mechanics in this game. I'm pretty good about them, uh, after having played this game for however long, but as compared to the other controls in this game, they feel very, very imprecise and kind of tough to control. Um, but I mean, pretty much no one enjoys water levels in any game. It's why the Water Temple is so universally reviled in Legend of Zelda, and why no one really remembers water levels as their favorites in Mario games. But I digress. Anyways, now we also have underwater thwomps, which... Okay. I guess it doesn't really make no sense, because in real life, rocks can do just fine underwater. But I'm thinking in terms of, like, Pokemon logic, because... A thwomp would definitely be a rock type. Or maybe like a rock ground type. So it definitely would do well underwater. Anyway, this is our introduction to Reznor. And I'm not talking about the front man of Nine Inch Nails. Because we don't listen to industrial rock on this channel. But the basic thing is you're just going to want to bop the platforms they're standing on with your head. And then take them down thereby. All there is to it. Honestly, not very complex stuff to be done there. And so, with Vanilla Fortress taken down, we now have access to Butterbridge 1. And yes, this does mean there's going to be Butterbridge 2. And these are auto-scrolling level... Well, this one's an auto-scrolling level. I'm pretty sure the next one isn't, if I'm remembering correctly off the top of my head. But truth be told, my practice run for this was a few weeks ago. So, I'm not totally well-versed in what every single level is, like I'd like to be. But, what can you do? Anyways, the main mechanic here is these are kind of like scales. Like, you need to use their balance in order to platform up them. And we'll kind of get into an area where this is, like, utilizing that mechanic is actually required. But... Yeah, right there you can go to 1-up, which is why I was intensely focused, so that I could get the 1-up. Anyways, right here is an area where you don't really need to use it necessarily, but you can definitely take full advantage of the whole, like, scaling mechanic. Or, like, the balance mechanic, I guess. To ascend 
in a very, very interesting way. And, no, mushroom, get over here, thank you. Okay, got the mushroom. Everything is fine. And I feel like there are a bunch of secrets hidden here, but I've never really had the will to check every single block. That one has coins, so if you're into coins, go for it. I personally don't care that much about them in comparison with actually playing the game. And I didn't mean to use my green shell there. I got really nervous about that even though I knew I could make it, so. And over here, that's just a coin. I still haven't actually looked up how star blocks work, even though this is like two recordings since the first video, but I promise I will do it eventually. I'm just being lazy about it. But anyways, that's Butterbridge 1. Butter Butterbridge 1. And so, we're gonna go ahead and hit up Butterbridge 2. And I was correct, this is in an auto-scrolling level, which I'm very happy about, but we do get a cape for it, which I'm also very happy about, because capes are fun. All right, and now we can go ahead and grab this cape once it falls gently and elegantly. And I didn't mean to use... I keep, like, squandering my Koopa shells, like, nobody's business. And I'm also squandering power-ups like crazy because I'm bad at this game on screen. But we've been over this. Uh, these are like little Koopalings that can actually use your shells against you. So, well, technically it's their shells, honestly, because you know, they're the Koopas in this relationship. But they're my shells because uh, as you may be aware, if you watch Game Theory, uh, Mario is actually a sociopath who is bent on destroying Koopas for his own personal gain. And... Uh, I'm so bad at this game right now. But fortunately, I was right after the halfway point, if memory serves, so very little in the way of progress lost. And really, really game... Why are you doing this to me right now? <sighs> All right. Can I get it on the third try? But yeah, you can actually tell the basic differences between the little Koopalings. Um, the fatter ones, basically, are the ones which can kick the shells back at you. And then the skinnier ones cannot. They just die to pretty much Pretty much anything, honestly. Um, yeah, these die to pretty much anything, but the fat ones kick shells back at you. Alright, and I forsook Yoshi so that I could get a dragon coin, which I'm going to call worth, even though I didn't have any of the other dragon coins in that level, and so it's pretty much just worth a coin to me. But, just goes to show... I only care about my friends worth a single dollar. Anyways, we cleared through all of the secret areas spawned by clearing the secret area in Vanilla Dome. So, see you guys next time.